So today is the feast of Saint Henry, the King, the Emperor of uh, all Holy Roman Empire, <clears throat> and the epistle for this feast of Saint Henry. Good to be back here again in Veneta, in Oregon. And remember, at the end of the Mass today, there'll be the Blessed Sacrament present on the altar. We have some because we'll be actually bringing Holy Communion to some of those that weren't able to come to the Mass today due to sickness. So we'll be bringing them Holy Communion afterwards. So at the end of the Mass, so we'll breathe, they'll just stay kneeling. When you sing the recessional, we sing the recessional, but you stay kneeling, and we'll go out and bring the Blessed Sacrament uh, to the vehicle. So the epistle for the Feast of St. Henry the King, taken from the Mass of the Confessor, <clears throat> Os Justi, <clears throat> Book of Ecclesiasticus, Chapter 31. Blessed is the man that is found without blemish, and that hath not gone after gold, nor put his trust in money, nor in treasures. Who is he, and who will praise him? For he hath done wonderful things in his life, who hath been tried thereby and made perfect. He shall have glory everlasting. He that could have transgressed and hath not transgressed, who could do evil things and hath not done them. Therefore are his goods established in the Lord, and all the church of the saints shall declare his alms. And then the gospel. Taking that according to St. Luke chapter 12. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, Let your loins be girt, and lamps burning in your hands. And you yourselves like unto men who wait for, the Lord, for their Lord, when he shall return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. And then I say to you that he will gird himself and make them sit down to meet, and passing will minister unto them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so blessed, and find them so, blessed are those servants. But this know ye, that if the householder did know at what hour the thief would come, he would surely watch. And would not suffer his house to be broken open. Be you then also ready, for what hour you think not, the Son of Man will come. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Father and Father, and Son of the Holy Ghost, Amen. <clears throat> Today we have the feast of a confessor and emperor, St. Henry. As you mentioned earlier, in the earlier sermon today, it says in the Holy Breviary that Henry saw the narrowness of this world. He saw the narrowness and constrictedness of this world and the things of this world and the, and the, the, the temporal kingdom. And he wanted a broader and a wider and a greater kingdom. And therefore, he despised the things of the earth and climbed to God. And in, here we note in the world today... <clears throat> Why did Henry, the greatest emperor, the emperor, Holy Roman, emperor, emperor of the Holy Roman, the entire head of the Holy Roman Empire, he died in the year 1024. He was a very powerful king and emperor. But he saw the life of emperor, the life of wealthy, the life of dignity in this world, the life of honor in this world, the life of power in this world. He saw it as narrow and empty. And he forsook the treasures of this world to find the next. And hence he became a saint. While he was on the path to find that next world, he married. And the wife that he married, marrying such a holy man, she also became a saint. St. Cunegild. She also became a saint. And he decided that he would not live for this world, but he had to be an emperor. So he considered only spreading the good of the church. He saw churches that were destroyed by the infidels and he rebuilt them. So monasteries that were, de 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 that were in bad repair, he rebuilt them. He promoted monasteries, and he promoted dioceses, he promoted bishops, and promoted young men to the religious life. And then when he saw the Greeks and others were attacking the Catholic lands, he led his armies into war. And the war was not to defend himself or the honor of his own kingdom, but to defend the church, to defend the widows and the orphans and those that were being oppressed. And he never did any act in his life without first spending long nights in prayer. 
When he turned to thought, what should I do for the kingdom of the Holy Roman German Empire? What should I do to rule this kingdom and leave it in a peaceful state? What should I do to wisely rule my people? What should I do in order to spread the kingdom of God? All things began with prayer. And he, th he thought of God and turned all things to God. And he recognized seeking after this life destroys a soul. And then she want to point out in our present battle we are fighting sin and heresy. There is sin and heresy all around us. And so we see that everyone is living against the Ten Commandments, all ten of them, and the most vile impurity and the most vile wickedness against God and all the various sins and blasphemies against the First Commandment, the sins possible against the Sixth Commandment, the Fifth Commandment, murdering their own babies, creating great scandal, leading souls away from God, the greatest sin against the Fifth Commandment, to teach another how to sin and lead another soul away from God, the sin of scandal, all the commandments, we find all the sins. And so therefore we want to say, I don't want to sin anymore. And if I stay away from sin and go to confession, then I have one third of the battle. And we think half the battle. Then we also, also fight against the errors of heresies and the, 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 the lies of our modern world. And we must pray to God and think of God and pray. But there is a third thing which we forget about in our modern times. And it is mentioned many times in sacred scripture. The love of money is the root of all evil. Money, the root of all evil. Treasures, things of this world, drag our souls down. So even if we obey the Ten Commandments, try to stay away from sin, try to stay away from heresy, and successfully stay away from heresy and error, and pray to God, say our prayers, say our rosaries, Go to the Holy Mass as often as we are able to go in our present circumstances in this crisis. It isn't sufficient to be a warrior for Christ. It isn't sufficient to win the war against the devil. We have to recognize that there is another problem. And that is materialism and money. And it's well said in the breviary today that St. Henry recognized the narrowness of material things. And we can look at it like unto a well. We mentioned earlier today, we'll mention it again. One of my parishioners, former parishioners in Sri Lanka, in Ceylon, only about 150 miles away from India on a large island about the size of England. In this island, the, the people of Sri Lanka live. They're very different from the Indian people. Their blood, they're the same, but they're very different culture, very different people. And when going to this, went to St. Mass in Sri Lanka, one of our parishioners there, when he was a little boy, his father had dug a well. And he dug a well on their property, and he and dug by hand the well, digging the well, the well about four or five or six feet wide, and he was digging it, digging it down, down, down. And he didn't hit water for a long time. And he dug too deep. And, he, and then when you dig a well very deep, what happens is that the oxygen does not go down, the air does not go down. And there comes a point when you're getting insufficient air and you don't realize it and then you faint and collapse. And if no one is there to pull you out of the well, you die. So he was there watching his father dig the well and he saw his father collapse because he didn't have enough air. He went down in the well himself, he climbed down the rope, he went down in the well and he tried to put his father onto a little gurney that they had. But he also was overcome by not being able to breathe, and he collapsed. And after about four hours, the people recognized that well, no, the son hasn't come back, and the father hasn't come back from the well. So they went to the well and found both the father and the son in the well. They went down and they pulled the son out first, and he was brought back to life. But the father was too late. He died. He died from digging a hole in the ground. And going down too deep, where there was not enough air. And we must recognize what the sacred scripture tells us. And what is the word mentioned in the holy breviary today? The narrowness of the world. When we have material things, 
and we have too much attachment to computers and too much attachment to our own homes and too much attachment to clothes and too much attachment to all kinds of material things. Not one of them is sinful in itself, except, of course, immodest and wicked clothing. But there are things that are not sinful in themselves. But we put, take these things and we adorn ourselves with them. And we have so many things. In fact, there's a definition that uh, someone made and has been repeated many times. Said, what is an American? American is a collector of stuff. <laughs> it's a guy that has got junk everywhere in his house. Every wall is filled with something. He's got stuff in his garage. He's got stuff in his closet. He's got stuff in his attic. And all that happens over time is he collects more stuff. He doesn't even know what most of it is. But what happens when we collect stuff, when we collect stuff, when we collect stuff, when we collect stuff, when we have so much stuff? It is like digging a pit in the ground. And the deeper we dig, the more stuff we have. We find, number one, that the view of the light, the light gets to be a smaller and smaller hole above us. We can't see heaven. We can't see above because we're surrounded by too much stuff. And as we dig deeper and deeper in stuff, we find it hard to breathe. And we just simply lose our energy and lose our strength. And we don't know how it's happening. We just don't have the energy we used to have. We don't have the drive we used to have. It's harder to pray. It's harder to be close to God. It's harder to persevere. It's just harder, but we can't think of any special thing that happened. And then one day we conk out. This has been the cause of the death of souls down the last 6,000 years. And in the Mass we read today, Blessed is the man that is found without blemish, that hath not gone after gold, nor, he has put his, nor put his trust in money, nor in treasures. Who is he? And we will praise him. For he hath done wonderful things in his life. Many people have not done wonderful things in their lives. They are just surviving from day to day. So yes, we have the problem of sin. And we have the problem of heresy. And the problem of wickedness in the world. But what is it that keeps us from fighting it? Too much attachment to stuff. Go to the example of those who sell their soul to Satan. They always sell their soul to Satan for stuff. They sell their soul to Satan so that they can have 40 years of reign. Like Elizabeth, now burning in hell, the queen in England, who sold her soul for 40 years of power to be the queen of England. Or sold their souls to be famous musicians, such as the rock and roll singers, and to be famous movie stars. And they got money, and they got pleasure, and they got power for a time. And their lives become darker and darker and darker. And uglier and uglier and uglier. But why is it that they sold their soul to Satan? Because they wanted stuff. Now what's going to happen one day? When the devil comes. And he says, alright you traditional Catholic. You Catholic that's standing for the truth. You Catholic that's trying to go to confession and stay away from sin. You Catholic that says you believe in the true faith and you don't want to follow heresy and don't want to follow any of the errors of Vatican II or of the fake society of St. Pius X or of the fake resistance or of those that are not following the truth in any way, the St. Vicondus and so on. You want to follow the truth. All right. But you want to be safe. You want to be comfortable. You want to keep your nice house. You want to keep your comfortable life. Well, in order to keep it, you're going to have to make a small compromise. One day they'll come. And what are we going to do? If we have too much stuff, if we have too much attachment to things, we are going to fail. And hence the devil is not worried about most of us. All right, there's a thousand warriors of Christ. and It takes ten of them to wipe me out. And there's a thousand warriors of Christ. The devil should be very worried. 990 more than are needed are carrying guns to attack the devil. But he's not worried at all. Because he knows what he sees in the hearts of those thousand warriors. Who are standing for the truth. But they are not ready to give up their comfort. And their focus on their own self. They want to stay with Christ as long as the paycheck is enough. They want to stay with Christ as long as they get the sufficient things that they think they need. 
And hence, when the test comes, they will fail. But St. Henry was given a much greater test than us. He was given the offering of the whole world. And the whole world was ready to follow him. And he rejected it. And he stayed with Christ. And when he was fighting with small armies against the enemies of the God, against the Muslims, and against the Greeks attacking the Christians, when he was fighting them, he saw angels in the front of the battlefield. He saw martyrs in the front of the battlefield fighting for him. And he was protected from his enemies. And he won great battles and wars. But he thought only of the protection of the church, the protection of the innocent. He did not seek any aggrandizement of himself. And he lived a perfectly pure life. He lived like a monk. He lived with perfect virginity all his life. And he lived in perfect uh, like a monk and then fighting for Christ and had no confidence in the things of this world. And he sought the things of God. And hence he was called Henry the Pious. And he was noted as Henry the Saint even in his own life. And when he died, many miracles. Why are there not miracles today? So many. Why, why are there not great warriors for Christ today? Yes, sin and heresy are two reasons.